Welcome back to Ted's Fish Room, and this evening we're actually in the fish room. It's been a while since we've been down here. It's been quite a while since I've been down here doing anything useful, so the place is a mess. So one thing I'm not going to do this evening is give you a tour. What I'm down here tonight to show you is how I'm going to solve the problem of all those plants that I pulled out of that leaker aquarium that we aquascaped in the last episode. So we have to come up with a way that we can keep these stem plants, specifically that alternate there Rhinecki and that Starogyne repens, going in good condition until I can get another aquarium set up for them. So that's what we're going to do tonight in Ted's Fish Room. I had to take a lot of nice plants out of a really nice aquarium setup before they really had a chance to get going. And all those plants were set up to grow underwater, submergently. Plants like this Altenanthera rhinecki. When they're in this growth form, they require a lot of light, and they require carbon dioxide in the water, and they require nutrients in the water. But I'm not prepared to give them that. So we're going to set these plants up to hold over, hopefully for at least a month, in an aquarium where they're going to grow emergently. I'm going to let them grow up out of the water. And then when I'm ready, I can use those emergent growth plants to start a new aquarium and they'll grow submergently just fine. So let me show you how I'm going to do that in one of my aquariums down here in the basement. I've got it set up and ready to go. So I've got a 30 gallon breeder that I have set up for this project. And all it really consists of is a bare tank, no filtration, no heat, and I put some substrate in the bottom. There was already some substrate in here, and it was pretty dirty, and it had some red ram's horn snails in here. I'm not worried about the snails, because they're either going to die in here and just become fertilizer for the plants, or they're going to help keep the plants clean. This is not a plant-eating snail. The other thing I've got is I've got a good light. Now, this is a current LED light, freshwater LED, and I can adjust the color temperature on it. Now normally this light I wouldn't use in a deep tank because it doesn't really have the lumens to get down. But look how shallow the water is. The water is going to start out just over top of the plants so they don't need the bright light to be able to penetrate the water. This light will be plenty for what they do. The last thing I'll have on here is a glass canopy, but I won't need that until I actually am done planting the plants into this tank. Now I'm going to put the plants in this tank the same way I was planting them in the other aquarium. But maybe I'm going to plant them in the substrate a little bit deeper. One of the advantages you have of doing it this way is you can plant the plants deep into the substrate and all the nodes where the leaves and the stems come together are going to form roots that go out into the substrate. To be able to grow a plant emergently, it has to have a strong base. It's got to have a decent root structure. So I'm going to stick it in a little further maybe than I would do if I was growing them submergently underwater. Same way, I hold my forceps so that the bottom of it is, is parallel to the ground. I just go into the substrate, right down the bottom of the glass. Now you'll notice that the stems are actually above the water. I don't really want that because these leaves aren't ready to grow out of the water yet. So once I finish planting all of them, I'll add some water to the tank just up to the very tip top of the leaves and I'm going to let it stay there and over the next few weeks they'll actually grow up out of the water and have that new emergent growth form. Now I'm just going to plant these in rows. Farmer Ted, I'm not worried about aquascaping. All I'm trying to do is keep the plants alive. So I have all of this alternate there Rhinecki, and I have all the alternate Rhinecki that are still in the cup that I didn't use the other day, and I have all the Staragani repens, and the hair grass I didn't use, and the uh, hydrocotyl tripartita that I didn't use. I'm going to put that all in here too. So when this is all said and done, it's going to look really, really thick. Now if I am doing one thing as far as positioning these plants, is I am putting the Alternanthera right under where the light is going to be because it is a red plant and needs a little more light than some of the other species. So I'm just going to line these all up in a row and then I'll start getting some of the other plants and plant them as well. I 
Another thing you can do, if you have long stems, let's say you go to the aquarium store and you buy a bunch of plants and they're six inch long stems, and you want more stems, or you don't want to plant them in your aquarium yet, you can do them just like this, but you can actually lay them down long ways on surface of the water, in every node, every place there's leaves next to a stem, they'll form roots and shoots. And you end up with four or five stems, however many nodes you have, out of one stem. That is a great way, if you ever get a rare plant, if you go to an aquarium club meeting or aquatic garden association, and you buy that super expensive, really rare plant that you only have two stems of or one stem of, if you learn to grow them emergently, they'll grow faster, they'll grow stronger, and you'll get more stems to use in an, as an aquatic plant when you do an aquascape later. Now I'll give you a look in here. There is that Yuncus repens back here in the back corner. I actually put another one over here as well. There's some more of that. There's that Hydrocotyl tripartita. There's the hair grass. This is all that alternate there, Rhinecki, and this is all the Staragani repens. I've got some more. So I have two more clumps of plants to put in here. Once all these plants are in the stem plant section that's going to grow emergently, I still have all those cryptocarines I have to take care of. And I'm not going to do those the same way. So the last thing to do is to add some water so the water level jumps right up to the top edge of the leaves of the plants. I want them to look almost like they're floating, but I want them to stay wet. And since I don't need a lot of water, I'm not going to use a hose. I'm just going to use a cup but I'm still going to use the plastic bag method to put water in without disturbing the plants. This is kind of a big plastic bag though. I think I'll fold it up a few times. Like that. Got a bucket of water at my feet. Now just very carefully put it in the tank. You'll notice the water level is getting up to where almost all the plants are almost completely under the water. Just the tips are coming up. Looks like the highest ones are back here. And I probably don't have to get them completely underwater. The humidity in the tank, once I put the glass canopies on, will be pretty high. So that looks pretty good. The water is only about an inch deep, about well, two inches to the bottom of the glass. The very tips of the plants are just barely out of the water. So the last thing to go on are the glass canopies. Now these glass canopies are pretty solid. There's maybe about a half inch gap all the way around, just in between the two pieces of glass. So it's going to stay pretty humid in there. Put my light right over the middle. And it's going. Cryptocarines can also be grown emergently, but it's a lot harder to do than growing stem plants. In order to get some crypts to bloom so you can actually identify what species they are, you have to grow them emergently. So a lot of people know how to do that. I don't. I've tried. I'm bad at it. So all I'm going to do to preserve these plants is I have set up a smaller aquarium, another 30 breeder, just to hold these plants. I've given them a good substrate. They have good water and bright light. So they'll grow and they'll be healthy and they'll be ready for me when I'm ready to aquascape another tank in a few months. This is the cryptocrine blast eye.
Okay, there we go. The water's a little bit cloudy. I did sneak a few other plants in there. A little bit of that junk is repens. This is a couple of sword plants. These are some aponagetan bulbs I want to get sprouting again. But mostly, it's for all those cryptocrines that are back there in the back. And I hopefully will be starting a new tank here in a few months. And these plants will hold for me just fine in this tank. So that's it for this little series on aquascaping the 75 gallon tank. The aquascape was nice, but the whole project was a bit of a bust because of the leaked tank. I'm probably not going to come back anytime soon and give a big video update on what's happening inside this emergent growth tank. But if you'll pay attention to my Instagram account or my Facebook page, I will give you updates as to what's happening in here. And we'll look at them in much greater detail when I actually get around to aquascaping a new aquarium. There will be a new aquarium to replace the one that leaked. Thank you for watching Ted's Fish Room.